Okay, good morning again. So let's uh, start with something that was left out about hash functions and a new topic called Mac. So basically, we we'll have to see what we have achieved so far. Okay, just a minute. Yeah, what we have achieved so far is uh, confidentiality. Okay, Alice sent something to Bob. Okay, uh, okay, to Bob. She can encrypt the message that she's sending with key K. And this key is because the symmetric encryption is available to Bob. And he can, all he can do is that look at the message received message and use the key to get the uh, in, uh, decrypt uh, m dash, which is result of this, and use the same key to get the message back, m back, okay? All right, and then, but Alice want confident, in addition to confidentiality, integrity and availability and authenticity. That when Bob, authenticity means when Bob receives something, Bob should know that, it has come from Alice, not from somebody in between, like uh, Mallory. Okay, so this problem we have not solved yet. Now, in between, after this, we have reused hash, and we have seen hash cannot be used for providing authenticity and integrity in all cases. It depends on the threat model, right? Depending on threat model and the design of system, hash can, the hash at times can provide integrity and confidence. As we have seen in case of you download something from a website, and then website also has hash value, but assumption is threat model is that Mallory cannot change the threat, uh, the hash value in the website. Okay, so now our challenge is to achieve these two, integrity and authenticity. So this is what the focus of today's class. At the, at, but, you know, at the end, we want to achieve all three together. Now, while achieving integrity and, uh, will, uh, and authenticity, we may lose confidentiality. Uh, at the end, we'll study a scheme where all three are achieved. And those methods are used by, you know, the protocols we use today, like HTTPS or TLS. Okay, we'll study these later. So these are the topics that we'll discuss. Of course, these are the references. Please go through the video lectures, you'll learn a lot. Okay, if you're interested in cryptography, it's very interesting subject. Those who are interested in mathematics can uh, pursue further studies. Or others who are not so much interested in knowing details of uh, in you know cryptography, they can use these standard libraries that are available uh, for securing something. Okay, all right. Okay, so we are going to study these topics, right? Okay, so first let's complete our discussion as hash function. So we have studied these in detail that hash function you can show it by any symbol we use this kind of symbol because you know the string could be anything okay say message m could be of any length and this is a compression function which gives you and this is hash it gives output we can call it hash which is equal to hash function of message m. This is small in size. Okay, and we have studied three properties of that, right? Okay, but this is designed in such a way that is very unlikely that there are two messages m1 and m dash, both will produce a result into something the same output, which is same hash value, which is practically finding these two is infeasible. 
all right so that's the key right so collisions collisions will be there but finding out collision is difficult okay or alternate problem you can give is that given can you find any pair of such m and m dash which will result into the same output and we have seen that again is difficult problem to solve okay and we have seen uses of that digital signature max message authentication code that we'll study today and then we use this in key derivation this is another view of hash function hash function is output is h which is a hash function with parameter m m is a message that comes inside okay and this is the block of message and add to that padding and length field so so overall it becomes multiple of uh, multiple of 512 bits okay and then at the output we get now this how does it work really inside is like it chops this message into 512 bits and then at the end when the working of that is over after many cycles uh, it you get finally a juice which is a tag which is nothing but hash value of the entire message so you let to rotate this multiple times that's the understanding that we can draw from this diagram any question i hope you understand right note that we have not used the key here so it's not symmetric encryption you are not so when alice sends message m with hash of m and bob receives m and hash of m so, oh sorry uh, and plus hash of m there is no exchange of key between the two okay now m and hm h of m goes in between as a on a unreliable channel or leaky channel then as some somebody in between say malory can tamper with it okay all right so it, we will uh, look at the problem later and see how to solve it so all these things we have seen all these are the properties correctness efficiency it has to be deterministic right every time you take a message m hash it you get small h every time you do you stop it for some time do it again you will get the same answer okay is a one way ness it means that from m you can h get h but h to m is not feasible computationally feasible this is not possible right? okay uh, second pre image resistance already we have said in this difficult to find given you a value of m this one is difficult to find m dash that will result into same value of h okay collision resistance is that can you find a pair of messages say x and x dash any pair of message which will result into same output okay so it, it means that when we say a system is collision free it means that it is not possible in polynomial time to find any collision any two values of original messages that will result into a collision okay unpredictability it means that if you change even one bit in original message m then output changes in you know more than more than half bits of or close to half bits of output or h changes right and that is in unpredictable way all right now this go through this diagram and see these are the popular hash functions of course when you are designing uh, when you are doing encryption you cannot design your own hash function it has to be proven to be secure technically correct okay all right please go through it and the, we can see from this one blue shows uh, considered strong 
and so on. We can see this steel is considered, shot three is considered strong. Uh, the shot two family shows little bit of weaknesses now. Yellow shows little bit of weakness, a minor weakness, but still being used, right? So shot two and shot three are being used today. Shaw one, we can see that in the year 2017, uh, collision has found. Okay? So basically, Shaw two and Shaw three families are secure now. Please go through this uh, website and you'll get more details. This table shows uh, same thing that we have seen here, whether collisions have been found or not. It and additionally, it gives the outputs. Uh, bit size that is a value of h and the input size now input size in terms of frame okay basically input can be we know that input could be of any size but it has to be made multiple of say something right so we say in shaw 2 for example uh, or shaw 1 it has to be a multiple of 512. So we'll have 512, so on. At the end, we have to do padding and attach length field. And total has to be multiple of 512. That's the, that's the interpretation of this value input. Okay. All right. Any question up to this point? Okay, all right. So now let's uh, see how it works out. So this is the original message M, and we are trying to get H out. Okay, so algorithm works as follows that we have discussed already. So it has to be a multiple of 512. If it is not, do the padding after adding the length field, length of the message, right? So you'll have to find out what is the actual length. Okay, so basically last block can also contain some some part of message M. Okay, so actually, it, uh, okay, all right. So basically, uh, because we want to make it multiple of 512. So last block may contain uh, part of M and then padding bits and length. Okay. Now what we do is that take first 512 bits and do transformation using some iv the constant value some value initial digest is called not it's the initial vector is initial digest okay it's a constant okay all right now note that if you have iv that we have your symmetric encryption then this iv should be sent to other side okay whoever is using hash function but that's not the case here that means that this has to be a constant known value take this known value and then do some type kind of transformation and continuously do this for certain number of rounds okay note that output of this will be something and then this is an input then again you take 512 bits and so on and so forth right and then finally you get message i s h Okay, you are so basically you're breaking message into a multiple of 512 bits. Take one block of bits and do the transformation. Now, what is this transformation? You'll look at later. And then when output of that comes, use it for uh, transformation for second block and so on and so forth, right? So another view of this is here. So this is uh, this construction method is called Merkel D Demgard, Demgard or whatever uh, method. So it's used in MD5, SHA1, and SHA2. So you take a block of message, a part of the message of some size. For example, here we take it 512, as we have seen here. Okay, in case of SHA1, and then give this input use. Uh, some constant uh, which we call it uh, initial digest okay and then 
use this function. Now note that this is a compression function. Okay, get the output of this, then use a second block of the original message and do this thing. Certain number of rounds, and at the end we get hash of m. Got it? Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Here it is the initialization vector, one of the inputs, but it's constant. They call it initialization vector. I use. All right. So this is the how it works, right? Any question? Here M1, M2 are same or different? How can it be same? What we have said is that this one, right? We have chopped it off into whatever. This first becomes M1, second becomes M2 and so on, right? So if the original message is this, same, you get first 512 bits, call it M1. Otherwise, you know, you can, you'll have to use all these blocks, right? And the last one, of course, is we do padding, of course, including length field. Okay, got it? Yes, sir. Now, the question you may ask, which you may to answer is that how many rounds? You know, I mean, if your message is very, very long, then how can you use this? Okay, so you have to have large number of rounds. Okay, so that the whole message is processed. What could be this number of rounds? That will number of rounds will put limit in your message size. Okay. Okay, all right. So now let's go ahead. This is another view of MD5 uh, implementation, same thing. Original message M add to that padding and message length. So this so this overall becomes length L, which is multiple of 512 bits. Okay, so take first 512 bits, use IV of 120 bits, and then use a compression function, and then uh, get 128 bit output this becomes input to second round a uh, second phase and then take sec second 512 bits and then do the same function and so on till you reach to the end where the whole message is covered and then output of that is 128 bit hash value or digest this is and this edge this is nothing but a compression function. Okay, this is another view for Shovel. This has taken from this book by Professor Parr and uh, please read the whole chapter if you really want to get into detail. So this consists of 80 rounds which are divided in four stages of 20 rounds each. Okay, basically it, uh, okay, so in th this uh, compression function, it has internally four stages, doing almost the same thing, four stages. And then you are, you are use, using this compression function 20 times. And when 20 times over, then take the output of this hash, this compression function, and this becomes your hash value. So you get input, which is 512 bits, one block, right? First block, like M1 here, right? You take M1 here, this is M1, 512 bits. Okay, so assuming, sorry, assuming this is a multiple of 500, but in for our simplicity, let's take the view this M1. And then is 512 bits, so no padding is required. Okay, only last block will require padding. And then we do these four stages of compression or transformation. Okay, and uh, do this for 20 times before 
taking this out. Okay, all right. Now this this is just one stage. Now this becomes input to this becomes also uh, input here. Okay, and the the last one. Okay, we'll see this how. Okay, now this is what is shown something that's here. shown in this diagram so you get these 160 bits okay from previous round which is nothing but 5 into 32 32 bits we call it a word so a b c d e are words okay and then you have message of 512 bits and then you have to you will have to do some kind of scheduling to schedule it such that you get 20 words 20 words of uh, where each word is 32 bits that is going to be used in all uh, now these 20 words are going to be used in 20 rounds so each word for each round and we do same thing for each stage so you, for each stage because the, the data will you know move 20 times so you need this words 20 words so in but we'll have to generate this 20 into 480 words out of this 512 bits how do we generate this so that these are in predictable way and uh, and uh, it gives some properties uh, that depends on algorithm so you you can read from the book how 512 bits can be used to generate 80 words 80 words is nothing but 80 into 32 bits now note that what we are doing in hash function is all predictable okay so what happens in each stage here is shown in this diagram okay so we are not going to get into details of this okay because we don't have time uh, if you are interested please read it by yourself so whole idea of showing all you all these di diagrams is to give you some understanding how actually hash function is implemented internally all right so we have covered about hash now let's move on to next topic which is very interesting which is called message authentication code we call it mac okay we'll go quickly this is where we are okay now we have seen that if we simply in simple encryption when alice is sending something to bob over leaky channel or in unreliable channel not unreliable un insecure channel then there can be mallory in between okay and then she can receive this encrypt okay and then so if l is sending message m and encrypt it then she can tamper with this message okay and then send the tempered message to bob okay So, would she come to know? Would would Bob come to know that something has been tampered? No. She, what he will get is some instead of E M, he will get some E of M dash, and will decrypt it using the key. He'll get some junk. So he will never come to know that it has been modified. So this attack is called man in the middle attack okay so in order to overcome this so basically authenticity is lost because it's bob is receiving message from mallory not from alice authenticity is lost right how about integrity integrity is also lost because what is receiving m dash instead of m now we want to achieve both integrity and authenticity and we use for that mac 
and something that we use that along with message m we attach a tag t okay which is nothing but mac of m okay so how do you do this now we are again going to use symmetric key encryption symmetric key setting not i am sorry not encryption symmetric key setting we that both bob and alice must use the same key okay for integ achieving integrity in authentication we are not talking about encryption here our concern is not confidentiality our uh, our concern here is integrity and authentication so we are going to use the same symmetry key setting which is the use of the same key with bob and alice to achieve this okay now so we want to attach some piece of information along with message m here we are assuming that message m will go in plain text okay as it is without encryption but we will attach a small piece of information that we call it mac okay sometimes we call it t okay that is based on the key k okay when bob receives the same thing message m and tag t he will use the same key to find out this message is genuine or not so he will apply this key k over this t dash whatever he has received and okay he will apply it over m and get the t dash and if t and t dash matches then is done so i will repeat so uh, uh, i just moved very fast in this case just a minute i will anyway we'll uh, come to this little later okay okay so let's go ahead and then we'll so we have seen that mac provide integrity and authentication is nothing what is a key checksum okay all right so it takes fixed length secret key basically key k an arbitrary length message message could be of any length and fixed length checksum which is tag t okay so other end bob will receive message m and tag t and of course he has value k then he will you have to ensure that it is the same message that alice has sent first thing is alice has sent and second the uh, is not tampered with okay so these two things we can achieve so this is alice of course uh, this uh, does not look good to see alice in this form but uh, assume that she is alice and this is bob alice has a message m to send she has a key which she has already communicated with to bob securely in between is uh, mallory okay so what will she do is that she will create out of this mac a small mac or we can call it tag t and what will she do is that she will send message m along with mac of this message with using this key so this is a function or we can a tag t that she has generated using the key over message so mac function has two inputs this message and the key and this thing she sends to bob bob receives it okay and then he uses this part and the key to generate a value some tag or we'll do mac function over this received message whatever we call it m dash for example and using this key k and get this tag and if the both match the received tag and the calculate tag match then everything is good 
okay now he can be sure that the message has come from alice and secondly message has not been tampered how can one say that can you answer this question anyone very simple thing if you are able to understand since both the max match so it has come from alice yeah but how do you prove this very right very right let's assume take the example where so all that mallory can do is in between she can change m and she can or she can change t which is tag or she can change both m dash t dash let's look at the scenario first scenario right if she changes m and does not change t and then uh, she, uh, bob receives when she changes m to say m dash bob will calculate tag using the key which is genuine key has received and then this tag will not match with the tag received okay so he will come to know there is something wrong it means that it has not come from alice because alice uses the key k what happens if mallory changes t does not change m then obviously uh, received t message and m uh, from m whatever uh, tag uh, bob calculates say say i'm sorry so so for example uh, uh this guy mallory changes tag to t dash then bob will calculate tag from using mac function over the received message and k and if this value does not match with the received one which will not match because you know this guy mallory doesn't know the key so she cannot produce correct tag and same is answer for m dash and t dash because mallory doesn't know the key so she cannot produce whatever the message she is changing to she can always change the message okay because message is anyway going in plain text right along with tag so message she can change but she doesn't know the key so she will generate some tag based on her understanding of key which could be anything which will not match with the the tag that bob will generate out of received message so in all three cases integrity and authentication uh, is uh, not proven right it means that bob will come to know the message is tampered with any question so this is the same thing we are trying to say here so this alice is here she uses message m she wants to send message m to bob she has a key k this key is available to bob by some method okay now she uses a function mac and then she sends in insecure channel both message m and the mac that is t we call it mac is nothing but this one mac of k and m this function of k and message m take input as m message m and apply key to that and you get the output that is tag t so attach this to message m send it bob will receive this message he will apply he knows the mac function applies this over using uh, key k that he has received over message m and get tag t dash if t dash is equal to received tag here then everything is good then yes otherwise no all right so we have covered this now what what are we getting out of it integrity and authentication 
both on the fact that only Alice and Bob know the key. But what we are losing here? Confidentiality. Because M is going in plane. Everyone can see the message, right? But we have achieved two things which is which are very important. So a lot of things you want public to see. There's not no harm. Okay. You are sending something to some your partner and you it doesn't matter, you know, that uh, everyone sees it. So, for example, you are telling your partner, I owe you $100. It doesn't matter, everyone knows it, right? But what matters is really somebody should not be able to change it. And secondly, your partner should know that it's coming from you. These are two important things which you are able to achieve. So, many applications, confidential is not so important. But what is more important is authentication and integrity. All right. So basically now this is theory, you can go through it. It has three parts, first generate the key. Second, you get the tag T using message M and key K. Okay. And then the algorithm that you use at the end, similar algorithm which Bob uses to verify. Now you need correctness. If the property is correctness, it means that Alice calculates Mac KM which is yeah, basically, which is uh, from this, uh, sorry, first is a determinism that, you know, every time using the same key, Alice will generate same tag and Bob should be able to parse it properly. Okay. Uh, efficiency is means that all this process should be fast. Now, security here we defined is new term, EU CPA. Earlier we have used IND CPA, right? Indistinguishability under chosen plane attack, right? Plane text attack. So now it's very similar to that. So we can define this. Okay. So I will just please I will skip it. Please go through it. Okay. Basically, okay, let's go through it. Uh, just a minute. Okay. So basically, first two points are anyway what we have we have discussed earlier. Okay. Uh, this point is also we have discussed earlier. The secure Mac are designed to ensure that even small changes in the message make unpredictable changes in the tag, which is a feature of hash. If you look at it, right, it make a small change and then output changes in a big way. Okay. Uh, in case of hash, we have seen just change one bit in the input output changes at least half the bit, right? Okay. Okay. Now we are trying to understand access uh, this game which Alice and Bob are, uh, Alice and Mallory are going to play is called existential unforgeability and under chosen plain tech, uh, text attack, EU CPA. Okay. All right, so we can define this Mac should be unforgeable under chosen plain text attack. The Mac function is also one way like hash function. Yeah, we'll come to that. We'll come to design of that, okay? We have not discussed that, right? But we can't use encryption. So encryption is very complex. Okay, but you are using key. Okay. Now here the game is game between Alice and Mallory. Now Mallory can trick Alice in creating Mac of her choosing. So Mallory can trick Alice in creating Macs of messages. That Mallory chose. So Mallory can play this game. So she keeps sending message after message after message to Alice, and Alice will create tag for each one of these. So what Mallory will get is that not only message M she is sending, say M1, she will get tag T1 back. 
So M1 she sends, she gets tag T1, M1 along with tag T1. She sends M2 to Alice and Alice will reply with M2 and tag T2 and so on and so forth. She keeps doing this, okay? Now, obviously, so even if Mallory can trick in creating Macs of message that Mallory chooses, Mallory cannot create a valid Mac on message that she has not seen before. Okay, so this is the, this is the crux here. Mallory cannot create a valid Mac on the message that she has not seen before. Okay, she can keep on sending this, but ultimately, Okay, there is a message M she received, MX she received. Now she cannot create a tag TX, which is a valid tag. Okay, all right. So basically out of all this experiment, she cannot learn about how tags are being created, which are based on, of course, key. And she doesn't know the key. She cannot, so in this experiment, can she guess the key? That's the challenge. If she can guess the key, after all this experiment, which is correct, correct key she can guess, or she, correct key she can find out, then she has won the game. Okay, so here is Mallory, and he, here is a, uh, Alice Hush, uh, and she is challenger. Okay, Mallory sends M, and Alice responds back with Mac of using K key and message M, which is nothing but T. Okay, and this experiment keep going on one after other. Okay, all right. Eventually, no, she she knows M one, M two, M three, and four, and knows the tag T one, T two, whatever. Eventually, she creates a message M, M dash, which is not something that she has already seen before, right? Whose tag she has already seen. Okay, otherwise she will know the tag. She creates M dash and calculates T dash based on her knowledge out of this experiment, right? If T dash is a valid tag for M dash, then Mallory has won. Otherwise she has lost again. Okay, all right. So a scheme is then EU CPA secure if for all adversaries, the probability of winning is zero. Okay, so the probability is zero that at least, uh, sorry, Mallory can create a valid tag of the, of, of some, some message, say M, which she has not seen before, or she, for whose tag she has not got from. Alice before. Okay, any question? Okay, all right. So now, so basically these are kind of higher level definitions of how we achieve integrity and authentication in, in Mac. So there are two types of Macs. Okay, one, Okay, some first one is max based on symmetric block ciphers. Okay. Second is based on okay, these are these have been traditional methods like DA and CMAC, and these are not in use. Okay, so we will not study. Second are based on cryptographic hash functions, which are very popular, which are becoming popular now. Okay. Now, why we have chosen hash here? Because hash is faster than encryption. Okay. So, if we have message M, then what we could have done is that create tag T using encryption of message M and send this to Bob. Okay, what's the issue here? K 
key is the same right key is known to bob also right so bob can actually decrypt the t dash uh, decrypt the t and get the original message m and compare m or alternatively also right i mean it, it receives m use the same encryption function get t dash and if t dash and t max then work is done so why don't we use encryption anyone because of speed yes and what else look at the size of this is a one to one function between encryption and decryption right when we use word tag tag is very small you know very tiny piece this is 128 512 256 bits the message can be upset 100 mega megabytes for 100 megabytes you can't create a tag of 100 megabytes right this is very long okay so you what do you want to create a tag of say 500 120 180 bits or whatever 256 or whatever tags we have seen earlier right okay so now this i will leave it to you to study first method is nmac just go through it and it's also given in the book and uh, berkeley site second one we use which is based on this one is also based on hash function but second one is called hash based message authentication code okay now note that we are using the key for verification at both end but we are not using encryption because encryption is slow okay so we, you can say that we, we first generate from message m uh, some tag uh, some you know you you there are multiple ways right you can do encryption of m and then use h of that hash of that and so on so forth right you can use that also but we'll discuss these options little later let's do very simple things for most of the application this is sufficient now this is proven to be secure so basic idea is key is hashed together with message we simply concatenate the key along with message and hash it okay we simply but okay so if we simply concatenate message m along with uh, 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 key and hash it there can be some weakness so, so we have to do it little intelligently okay or we come out with a design okay all right okay now here hmac has output of 256 bits please go through this nothing but same thing that we have studied earlier it combines both mac and benefits of mac and underlying hash okay all right so hmac is one method okay so let's go into details so there are function is something like this hmac we are creating over using key over message m this is nothing but a tag okay now what we do is that first create a version of key if key is too short then pad key with zeros if key is too long then we'll have to hash it to reduce so that is ultimately k dash which you'll have to get is of n bits so basically you have to do some transformation on the key now note that this is one such algorithm then the output is h of hash of k dash which is a version of the key exclusive or with opad then concatenate the that output whatever bits you get with h of k dash and ipad 
Now, question is that what are OPAD and IPAD? These are another term that we are using, right? Okay. So, it's something like this. K dash anyway we have seen. Okay. How can, uh, how do generate K from K dash? We can just read it here. Is paired with zeros or whatever. Okay, now what we are doing is that use this K dash to derive two keys, which is OPAD. Okay, and IPAD. So OPAD is outer pad, which is hard coded bytes of 5C repeated until it is of same length of K dash. IPAD is a hard coded bytes 36 repeated until is of length K dash. Okay. So as long as IPAD and OPAD are different, you will get two different keys. Okay. All right. So basically here, note something we are doing here and here. All right. Uh, and we are trying to get two keys out of it. So if you look at this, just a minute. Okay, I think. Uh, so okay, we'll cover this in next class. Okay, but uh, because I think we don't have time today. Look at this diagram and then we'll close. So we have a key K here. We exclusive or with OPAD which is nothing at, but uh, 5C, 5C, 5C. And then you do, okay. Exclusive or of what you have received here, which we call it uh, OPAD with key K, okay. And then, then you get this same key here, you exclusive or with iPad, which is uh, 36, 30, 36, you get this thing, K exclusive or iPad. Now take the original message M and hash it. You will get the hash value, which you put here and do the, the hashing of that, you will get HMAC of K and M. Okay. So if you look at the diagram, just a minute, there was a, oh, sorry. Yeah, so that's, that's it, right? So Anyway, we'll discuss this again in the next class. So let us just look at this function and how do you achieve? What is K dash? How do you derive K dash from K? What is OPAD and IPAD? And whether this whole algorithm is efficient or not because hashing itself takes some time. Okay, now note that we are here using very intelligently key K. Okay, so if you look at this diagram, here, just a minute, I will close. Uh, we are not using encryption, but we are adding the key very smartly. Okay, by excluding or with some pattern, and then that same key goes into overall contents here. Okay, all right. Any question?